all right, now we're up to 20,000 people and the mic is on. You know, it's key things to remember to do. Can somebody tell me what you're drinking tonight so that I know you can hear us? Anyone, anyone, are you drinking? We're getting ready to, can you hear me? Let's see here. You're on the big screen. Yay, thank you, Diane. Diane, can you hear us talking? Lisa, yes. Wine, what do you think? Okay, so people can hear us. Chris and Sally are drinking wine. Debbie Mayer, Grey Ghost Cabernet. Christina has Vidal Blanc. Karen Quayton's red wine. Christina, mom, loves seeing you. Hi, Larry. Larry's got his romantic rosé open. Lisa carries in, and we're up to 22,000 people. And Karen Quayton says they can hear us. So now I think we're about ready for showtime. Let's hear the clapping. All right, and I am pleased to bring to you Al and Cheryl Kellert. Are, are we on now? Yes, are, we're, are we on? we're on, but you're not clear yet. Let me see if I can get you focused. Ooh, wave, maybe wave, wave to the camera. Oh, wow. Why are we blurry? There we go. I'll tell you what, we need a new camera department. All right, it's go time. Okay, hey, welcome back to all of our friends out there, friends of Grey Ghost. I cannot tell you how happy we are to be back with you this evening. And we're wishing you happy holidays from all of us here at Grey Ghost. We're coming to you today live from Grey Ghost Studio TR1. This program is going to be divided into three segments, the first celebrating 2020 and wishing it a swift goodbye. But before we get started, I do want to tell just a little bit of a story, a Christmas story that I think is very meaningful to all of us. We found out that recently the FAA did a surprise inspection on Santa's sleigh of reindeer to find out whether or not they were airworthy. After the inspection was over, the inspector went up to Santa and said, everything looks real good, it looks like you're good to go. Uh, do you mind if I take it for a test run? And Santa said, sure, no problem, hop in. So as he was getting in, Santa couldn't help but notice he was carrying a gun. He immediately looked at the agent and said, you're not gonna hijack me now, are you? And he said, oh no, not at all. Anytime we take something for a test run, we always like to see how it'll do if one of its engines fail. So with that, I think now we can move on to our program. To begin with, we want to emphasize that this is not a commercial advertisement for Grey Ghost. This is our opportunity to be with you. And of course, we're going to be focusing in on the events that have happened in the past, what's happening in the present, and what we look forward to in the future. So why don't we start the evening with the 2019 Vidal Blanc, a gold medal winner. And that's gonna be the first wine of the evening. By the way, it's available at the winery for $19 a bottle. So let me pour the, the first of the wines for Cheryl. Now, as we're all aware, the COVID-19 has had a little bit of a escalation during this period. So, in order to remain safe, I've asked Cheryl once again to de uh, demonstrate the very importance of uh, safe consumption, i.e. with two wine glasses. Uh, Cheryl, thank you very much. Now with that, let's do a toast and then we'll talk a little bit about the wine. There's always that fifth wheel right there. Well, here's to 2020. Wow, now that's a great wine. Let's talk about the 2019 Vidal. It's available at the winery for $19 a bottle. The Vidal is the name of the grape this was cold fermented in stainless steel. 
we one of the reasons it was cold fermented is we wanted to retain a lot of the fruit character in this this wine since the variety is actually related to riesling definitely becomes a very fruity styled wine this particular vintage we actually fermented a little bit drier so it's coming in at about point six percent residual sugar making it a very nice aperitif wine in fact amy is all often called this a wine a summer in a bottle so i hope you're enjoying this just like we are now one of the things we like to do is get a real quick briefing from cheryl on various issues that may be facing us as a country and also us as a winery so i've asked her to spend a little time giving us examples of some of the wonderful leadership that we've had both statewide local and national as we've operated through 2020 cheryl do you have any comments well i didn't expect her to go into such detail thank you again cheryl for your input we really appreciate it i think we all look forward to these comments that you made during the program now a quick review of 2020 as far as the gray gross perspective is concerned as many of you know cheryl and i don't get away from the plantation that often and when we do we really like to have a chance to just to have a quiet time so january is the one moment we did take some time off we had a quick visit down to the florida panhandle very restful as luck would have it cheryl's sister uh, jan and her husband dave recently moved down that area so we were able to spend some time with them which really made it a nice trip in other words it was just a great getaway and a great way to start the new year February saw us completing the winter pruning in record time. And this is something that's very critical to the vineyard. We want to get that done as quickly as we possibly can so we can prepare the vineyards uh, for the various repairs that need to be done. At the same time, we had the Valentine's Day chocolate and Cabernet event, which was very successful. I think we all had a great, wonderful uh, period of time during that. So in, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is the year couldn't have started out better. Then came March. We were able to squeeze in the barrel tasting, also a very successful event, and had a wonderful winemaker dinner with the Marriott Ranch. It was a beautiful evening. They performed excellently under the pressure that we were facing at that particular time. And we couldn't have had a more perfect evening to spend with them and many of the friends who joined us that evening. That was on March 14th. The day before, the governor announced that the state would be basically shutting down on Monday the 16th. Ironically, the announcement was made on Friday the 13th. And that's basically what we were facing. That kind of began to set the tone for the rest of the year. April to June was really struggling. As all of you know, we were trying to figure out what was going on. Nobody really knew a whole lot, but quite frankly, it was you all that came to our rescue. I can never begin to tell you how thrilled Cheryl, I, Amy, Al, and all of those here at Grey Ghost, uh, how happy and, and a warm feeling we had with the overwhelming support that came from each and every one of you. Now, on the upside of the governor's announcement, he did make one very important decision. He declared alcohol as an essential necessity to the health of the Commonwealth. As a result, we got to stay open with, of course, a number of restrictions still in place. To our amazement, Although alcohol was named an essential, toilet paper was not. So that put us into perspective on where we stand with regards to nature's call. In May, just about the time we thought nothing else could go wrong, by the way, that's something you never say out loud, we had a, mother, a Mother's Day late frost. And when I talk about a frost, it was closer to a freeze. To put it in perspective, the day before the major freeze, we had heard that we were going to get some very cold weather. So 
So at 1.30 in the morning, I went out and the temperature was running at 37 degrees. I knew we were safe about that time. The next night, I went out at 1.30 and the temperature was at 33. We had notified the county sheriff that if the temperature dropped, we were going to light burn piles, which were strategically placed throughout the vineyard in order to protect the crop and get us air inversion. But we also warned the sheriff and told her, if we do light them, don't call the fire department because it is going to look like a war out here. By 2 o'clock, all the burn piles were lit. Much to our chagrin, we were not able to save the Chardonnay. Most of the other varieties did come through with some damage, but the Chardonnay was devastated, losing about 96% of the crop. As a result, we were able to produce one barrel of Chardonnay coming off the 2020 vintage. Now, the upside is that barrel is an incredible barrel of Chardonnay. So it will be released in a couple of years as a reserve. For those of us who are here looking forward to that, we're going to be pricing the bottle somewhere around a million dollars a piece, and with that comes the winery. So we hope we do have some takers. Now, when we started, this was about the time we began to start the happy half hour, and this was the brainchild of our lovely Amy. She had told us, basically, that if we can't be with you, in person, then let's try to be with you on the screen. So I've got to give Amy incredible credit for coming up with this novel idea. The result was a program that all of a sudden allowed us to talk about things that normally we can't talk about in the tasting room. Talk about our family, the winery, the vineyard. Sip on a little wine and have a few smiles. We got to get around uh, the various locations within the winery showing you how we were producing world-class wines. We also hope that the experience demonstrated one thing that was so important to us, and that was the passion that's gone into this winery over the past 26 years and what's made Grey Ghost what it is today. At the same time, uh, it also gave us the opportunity to show you all that were still alive and kicking, and that was very important. Now, Virginia slowly began to open, and when it did, we were also able to start opening more of the tasting room and use our opportunity of actually being with you in person. Fortunately for us, and most of you know this, our winery is strategically set up to have individual tasting bars. So we were able to separate them with dividers, and it gave us an excellent opportunity to service customers without violating any of the regulations according to CDC. We also took the advantage of having substantial outdoor seating, purchased a number of new tents so that individuals coming to visit the winery actually felt, felt that, that they were in their own isolated little environment. Now, of course, the lounge was closed, but that didn't stop people from coming. So again, we'd like to raise our glass to each and every one of you who made this very difficult period something that was really worth living through. Again, Victorian uh, Vidal Blanc selling for $19 a bottle. The next phase was we were starting to allow people to enter the tasting room. Masks were required. Social distancing now became a way of life. By July, we were able to celebrate our 26th years in operation. Many of our friends joined us. I can't thank you all for being a part of it. It really made it possible for us as a family to realize what an extended family we really had. Now we reached the single most difficult time of the year, harvest, which was the August and September time frame. I don't think anything was more challenging to the family than how to do a volunteer harvest, get our crop in, and still remain safe. Granted, we only had three harvests this year, 
because the Chardonnay was basically off the table. We were still able to use volunteers. Many of those who are, uh, were out there today did help us and participate. For those of you that didn't, we greatly modified the harvest program. We no longer were doing anything on the crush pad. Everything was done in the garden, strategically spaced, and then of course the picking and even the party was kept at a safe distance so everyone felt uh, very secure and safe. The result of the harvest, our quantity is down, but let me tell you, the product is a superior and actually spectacular quality. Now we're moving closer to the time frame we're in right now. In October, the restaurants began to open up with limited capacities, and we were very, very fortunate to be working with one particular restaurant, that's Laporta's in, in Alexandria, which hosted our first winemaker event since the shutdown. The event was magnificent, and the Laporta's family did just an absolute marvelous job putting the program on. It turned out to be a wonderful evening, and it gave us just a smidgen of hope that normalcy, normalcy would someday be back. Back to the family, uh, Cheryl and I always host Thanksgiving. Cheryl puts together an incredible spread. This particular time, she had all four of the grandkids supporting her in pulling the food together. And naturally, we served a Grey Ghost wine. It was the award-winning 2000 or 2019 Grey Ghost Gewürztraminer, which is available at the winery today for $25 per bottle. We're going to be covering December later on, but just in a real quick recap, I want to thank everyone who stuck with us during this very, very difficult period of time. I cannot begin to tell you how dear you all are. As far as we're concerned, you're our extended family. So once again, I raise my glass to each and every one of you who got us through 2020. Now, on a little bit of an upside, what I'm going to ask Amy to do is talk to you a little bit about some of the really serious positive things and the bright spots of the year. So with that, we're ending faith, this first scene of this wonderful program. Thank you for being with us, and we'll be back with you shortly. Hi guys, we have had a really, really incredible year when it comes to wine competitions, and I want to share some of the biggest news with you. So we began the year with our 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon taking double gold at the San Francisco Chronicle Wine Competition. Now, we were pretty excited about the double gold, but what made it even more incredible was that over 17 categories, there were eight hundred Cabernet Sauvignons, you heard it, 800 Cabernet Sauvignons entered in the San Francisco Chronicle. We were the only Cabernet out of, outside of the West Coast to take a double gold. The significance of a double gold is you go through two panels of judging. So once the first panel ranks you as a gold, then this, it goes to a second panel and that entire panel of judges also rates you a gold. If one person says silver, you get to keep your gold, but if you go through two panels of judges and are ranked gold by everyone, you win a double gold. So we were pretty excited about that. The next one to come along was for our 2017 Reserve Chardonnay. This was pretty cool. This was the New World International out in California, and we took best of class. Our category was 25 to $55 bottles of Chardonnay. So our $29 bottle of Reserve Chardonnay beat all the $50 and $55 California Chardonnays. I will tell you the truth, y'all. When I saw those that award, I actually cried when I told Dad because I'm telling you, that Reserve Chardonnay is some luscious stuff, and I knew we were going to win big. Most recently, and this was in the past three weeks, so recent we haven't gotten out our press release yet, 
Our Petite Verdot took best of class at the Harvest Challenge wine competition in California. Now this is a pretty cool deal because, you know, 2018 was a little trickier of a growing season and we had, we worked hard and we had an incredible year. We're so thankful for how wonderful the wines came out and check that out. Best of class, 97 points out in California. Now, no award listing would be complete without talking about our reserve Cabernets. Now this gold right here at the International Women's Wine Competition in California, the significance of any medal we receive on our reserve Cabernets is such that at $50 a bottle, we are entered in the ultra premium Cabernet category. So whenever we enter that reserve Cabernet out in California or any other competition, we are typically competing against Cabernet Sauvignon wines that are twice, if not three times our price. So we are proud of all of those awards. And I think it's also important to note when it comes to the Chardonnays and Cabernets, those are the most competitive classes in any wine competition because everybody makes Cabernet. Everybody makes Chardonnay. So those are some pr pretty tough categories. But I think one of the things that made us most excited this year was actually thanks to you all, our extended Grey Ghost family. And that was Northern Virginia Magazine did a Wine Wars. And boy, did we have weeks and weeks of voting. And I have talked to so many of you who were so awesome voting every single day and helping us advance. And let me zoom in and show you. I'm gonna zoom in the camera right here. Yes, Grey Ghost was awarded the winner of the Wine Wars for Northern Virginia Magazine. And that was all people's choice. That was thanks to you guys voting. So we really, really appreciate that. So now I'm gonna head back over to Alan Cheryl. What, what, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my gosh. Oh man, for heaven's sake, what happened to those guys? This is ridiculous. And I'll tell you what, you give them a minute, they act like they own this place. All right, let's see what we can do. What, Ugh. they're slippery little suckers. I can't imagine what's going on. I think maybe we need to check out, oh, I think perhaps we should look at the entrance to Santa's throne room. Do you think they could be in there? I'm guessing we might. Well, would you looky there. There you guys are. These poor people getting stuck with me. Oh my goodness. All right. We are back. Glad I found you guys. Well, this is wonderful for our, our second a uh, second half of the three-part series that we're doing here. Welcome back again to the happy hour here at Grey Ghost. We're right now broadcasting live from Grey Ghost Studio, STR1. Uh, this is again, like I said, the second half of the three-part series. What I thought I'd do since we're in Santa's throne room is just tell you a little bit about the, the four segments of life and the stages of life. The first stage, of course, is you believe in Santa. The second stage, of course, is you don't believe in Santa. The third stage is you become Santa. And the fourth stage is, of course, you look like Santa. For those of you who are no longer believing in Santa, the best you can hope for is clothes. So for that reason, Cheryl and I are thoroughly convinced that we believe in Santa. Now, the second wine this evening is our Romantic Rosé, uh, which is available at the winery, by the way, for $20 a bottle. So let me pour us our, our wine, and then we're going to talk a little bit about this wine. Do I have a fifth glass over there? So 
let's let's toast the, the whole th audience. Uh, Shout out to Christina, who's now moving on to her rosé too. <laughs> this is fun watching, and Karen Quaintance's new favorites. You guys are awesome. We got all kind of fun people on tonight. Wow, that is a great wine. Let me tell you a little bit about the rosé. Up until now, the Victorian red was as close as we had to a true rosé. After 26 years and a little bit of a uh, push from Amy, we decided to come out with a true rosé made with three of the five Bordeaux varietals. As you all know, everything we produce is grown here. We grow all five of the Bordeaux varietals, which includes Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Melbach, and Petit Verdot. These are three, it's a pri uh, pr proprietary blend, so we don't tell what is in it, and it does give me a little flexibility over time. Each of these varieties were lightly macerated, giving us that beautiful pink color, and then fermented 100% to dryness. So this is a very simple uh, uh, French style of rosé, and again, made totally with the Bordeaux grapes. Now, once again, I was looking forward to Cheryl spending a little time with you. In fact, she requested several minutes to talk about the positive and very inspiring support that we received from the leadership in Richmond. So Cheryl, I thought now would be a good time to take a little bit of a break and just let you expound on that. Gee, I thought that was gonna take a little bit longer. Cheryl, you always can put things into perspective and keep it short and a few uh, really to the point. Thank you very much. If anyone has any questions on Cheryl's comments, please don't hesitate asking. Now we wanna cover a couple of things on this particular phase. Uh, one of which, since we're in the throne room, Santa's throne room, is to talk a little bit about the displays that you see in this room. These have been made over a span of 30 years, the latest of which is the little red fire truck that you're gonna be seeing later on. There's over 9,000, actually there's exactly 9,385 corks on that particular uh, display item. Some of the most frequently asked questions that we get are stuff like, what was the first one you made? That one is uh, hanging on one of the stainless steel tanks directly behind me. Another question that's often asked is which one took the longest? The centerpiece tree that you see directly behind Cheryl and me actually took three years to build. A little side note, the top three tiers of that tree was actually the Christmas tree that Cheryl and I used in our house prior to moving it down to the winery. Then the bottom four tiers were added over the next two year period. What was the most difficult? It was the hot air balloon. The frame had to be crafted out of eight individual panels with the internal frame built for support. The entire structure is tongue and groove assembled to give it support and stability. So when you're looking at it, you're actually looking at a, a unit that's structured so that it won't fall apart if something were to happen. What was the most fun and challenging? It had to be the biplane. It was really kind of fun to structure the wings so that they actually gave the airfoil approach, but had to be structured in a way that could hold up with it being pulled down on gravity. The biggest pro problem was the propeller. I had a very difficult time getting it uh, to work Finally, with the help of a dear, very dear person who keeps working with us on a regular basis, that's Jason, he got it to function this year for the first time and it's now fully operational. Probably the single most asked question in the entire display is what is going to be added next year. The answer we always give is visit us around Thanksgiving of next year and you'll get to see. Yes, I think I've got a question. We do. 
So our dear friend, Alina Reddy, from right here in Amosville, asked, what inspired you to start making the cork displays? I'm glad you asked, because that's a story unto itself. Cheryl and I had an opportunity to go out to California in the early 80s. And in order to keep Amy and Al entertained, we told them that if they could collect corks, we would pay them a penny a cork from any winery that they got corks from. It was going real well until we hit one particular winery and the gentleman who owned it said, oh, I've been looking forward to finding a way of getting rid of my corks and brought out a huge, and I mean a huge box of corks. The kids spent the next three days in the motel room counting corks, bankrupting Cheryl and me, but now we had enough corks to try to figure out what to do with them. And that was the beginning of the, the cork program. That's why in the big Christmas tree directly behind you and the original tree hanging on the uh, uh, tank, most of those corks come from another winery. Only as we progressed into our own winery did our own uh, wine corks become the center uh, portion. So Lisa Carey is asking which one had to be disassembled to move it into the tank room. The, the one directly behind me actually works like those pill bottle cups where it's inverted and each of the individual panels fit into the other so that by the time it's put down, the entire tree is the size of one panel. You're going to also see the uh, Christmas or the Santa sleigh and reindeer. That's disassembled and actually is stored in a box. The uh, mysterious, uh, uh, what I call forest, that's going to be directly behind the little red truck also comes apart, is disassembled, and each of those trees stack on each other. So a number of these can be reduced to a very small area. You're going to see an 11 foot nutcracker very shortly. In order to get it in and out of anywhere, the head has to come off. So once again, a number of these do break down. Well, now the second portion of this segment deals with what's going on in the winery. As most of you know, who maybe have been a, a, a here, we just completed the Christmas cork and cheese program and Santa visited a week ago tomorrow. Both were very successful and I must admit were very safely executed. So we were very pleased with that. Winter pruning, we're in the full swing of that. About 42% of the vineyard has been pruned, and we're, I think we're running right about on schedule with that. This recent weather has slowed us down slightly, but I don't think it's going to cause us a big problem. For those of you who have often asked, are you going to do any new planting? The answer is yes. We are in the process of deciding whether uh, a new planting in which we are going to be doing some Bordeaux reds. That is yet to be determined. Uh, hopefully, we'll get those up in the ground sometime this spring. And finally, something that's brand new this year. Up until now, Cheryl and I have done all the pruning. But this year, we've selected three individuals who have been uh, super workers, two of which were summer health. That's Ellie and Paxton. Uh, many of you may have met them during the course of some of your visits to the winery. And of course, Jason, my right-hand man. All three now have been trained or will be to help up prune. So that's going to greatly help us in our efficiency in getting the job done. Finally, the single most difficult job, probably at the whole winery, is pulling the canes. It's very physical. It has to be done. We've got to get those canes out of the vineyard. And that's where my son Al has really taken the lead on, and he's in the process of trying to keep up with the prune. Now, what's happening with regards to winemaking? Uh, next week, we're going to be running the lab tests on all of the wines that are scheduled for bottling in 2021. This is extremely critical because the information from the lab test in, uh, directly is reported on the label 
which has to be accurate for the federal government's TTB regulations. So that's going to be done beginning next week. We also are going to be checking the, the quality of all of the wines from the 2019 and 2020 uh, barrel aging to determine are they moving along sufficiently in order to get them into the bottle. The last step is, of course, production levels. All of the wine has to determine how much we're going to produce of any given wine. And the reason for that is we have to know that information in order to start ordering the bottles, the corks, the capsules, and of course the labels. On a miscellaneous side, there's also the requirement of filtration, so a number of filters have to be ordered as well. As you can pretty well see, the winter does not come to a grinding halt. If anything, it's, it's just as busy as ever. And because of the condition of the health in the U.S. today, Cheryl and I are going to be spending uh, the holidays at home. So you will probably see us, whether you like it or not, if you come out during the visits at any time during the holiday. Once again, the only way that we were able to move into 2021 as smoothly as we did was because of the incredible support we had in 2020 from each and every one of you. So we are entering 2021 in very good shape for the production of the new, uh, new wine. Once again, I do want to give a special toast to each and every one of you with the Romantic Rosé now available at the winery for $20 a bottle. Amy, are there any more questions that we should be posed? Oh my gosh. We got a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> we might be here a couple minutes. <laughs> Well, you can see that Amy is a very happy little elf. Woo! Okay, let's see here. Let's back up a little bit. Okay, uh, our dear friend Peg is asking, how much does the big tree weigh? That's a very good question. I've never weighed it, but I can assure you it cannot be lifted by two people. It's, it's extremely heavy. The frame itself is constructed of wood. So that, that also adds to the weight of that tree. Our dear friends, Chris and Sally Christopher, where do you store the structures? All of these are stored in the warehouse, uh, directly in a room, directly behind where we have a temperature control uh, storage for our, our bottled and cased wines. I should have a note here that my son, Al, has indicated that the day I die, these go on eBay. After all, he's the one that has to do most of the breaking down. We all put them up, but he and his crew are the ones that take them down. So they are stored in a special room, which I must admit is climate controlled. Okay, Jim and Jane Greenwood, what percent of the 2021 sculpture has been created already? <laughs> That's a very good question. I'm gonna answer it this way. I'm working on the 2022. Suzanne would like to know how long now, so now we're switching over to the um, grapes, we're out in the vineyard. How long after planting does it take to harvest grapes? Uh, whites are a little more forgiving. We can normally expect a nice crop with quality grapes within three, possibly four years. Red on the other hand, requires vines to be a little bit older. Now you can harvest in three to four years, but the quality probably won't be there. So I would say, if I'm right, Cheryl, wouldn't you say about five years to get a really good crop out of a, a red? Yes. However, it all depends on how old your rootstock is. Two-year-old rootstock or one-year-old. That's a good point. What Cheryl's bringing up is the fact that when we order from the nursery, we designate the age of the rootstock. So it depends on how long those grafts have been growing on a root to develop that plant. Good point. Um, now we're gonna go into the winemaking and Chris, I think is asking a follow-up. What are you testing for when you were saying that you're gonna be doing these wine tests? 
if you look at the label chris one of the things you're going to notice is they have an alcohol listing on the wall label what we have to do is verify the alcohol level on the bottle or on in the wine in order for us to be able to put that on the label it has to be within a certain designated uh, percentage in order to be legal so that's one thing i test the other thing i test is for the acidity of the grape and the ph the acidity is going to tell me the degree of crispness in the wine whether or not it's going to be flabby or it's going to have a nice crisp character the ph is going to tell me how long that wine is going to last normally a red has a little higher ph than a white which means the white is going to be a little higher in acid and a little crisper but we also have to be very careful with the ph on the red because the reds are the ones we're normally laying down oh my goodness al we are getting blown up so <laughs> stacy tiley would like to know well first chris and sally said they'll come in and do the taste testing part <laughs> stacy tiley would like to know what will you be drinking um with the various courses of your Christmas dinner. Pairing info would be most interesting. Do you want me to take that one on? Why don't you, Amy? <laughs> by the way, our Christmas dinner is hosted by Amy and her husband, Tom, and it's nothing short of spectacular. So there's no better person to talk about what she's going to be presenting than herself. I usually, for Christmas dinner, do a little beef tenderloin and a very simple uh, butter and soy sauce marinade with good yummy mushrooms. And I always treat mom and dad to old vintages of Reserve Cabernet. We usually do three different vintages. I haven't picked those out yet. I have to, you know, go in the cellar, pull up, see what we have there. Um, crab cakes and shrimp the size of my fist are part of the menu. <laughs> And so, you know, Mama and I love us some Reserve Chardonnay, so we'll be drinking a little bit of Reserve Chardonnay. But I will tell you, this new rosé is absolutely fabulous. So we'll be adding that to the list as well. We also, I'm having smoked salmon. I'm doing a little salmon dip on top of cucumbers. I do Perconi Romano. Oh gosh, Dad's looking at his watch. Um, little <laughs> cheese crisps. Maybe I need to send this back over to him. No, no, so no. that's <laughs> so that's just a few of the items that will be on the Keller family menu this Christmas. And now Larry would like to know what wine will you be toasting 2021? In? Larry, that's a good question. <laughs> One way or the other, it will be a Grey Ghost wine but chances are there's also going to be a bottle of, of sparkling wine involved. And if I and Cheryl have our way, it probably won't come from California. In, in our, and by the way, it would probably be called a champagne for real. So if that helps you out, I'll let you, I'll let you know. So Alina Reddy has a follow-up of what would you pair with ham? Actually, the rosé would be spectacular. However, the uh, we often had it with our Cabernet Franc. Right. The Cabernet Franc is really a, a, a nice wine with pork and ham. <laughs> Stacy Tiley, great pairings, but Jeff asked, what, no tacos? <laughs> <laughs> How much has he had to unfortunately, drink? <laughs> unfortunately, Taco Bell is closed that night, so there's not much we can do. Well, I really want to thank you for staying with this uh, second half or the first half of the three-part series. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is turn it over to Amy and her, let her do a quick walkthrough of the court display. And uh, she's going to actually take you through it so you'll get a virtual view of what you're seeing in the room. Thank you again. We'll see you uh, in, the, in the third part of this uh, special program. All right, so I'm going to start right here in the center with our centerpiece tree. And one of the things that Al wanted to make sure I let you all know is it took three years for him to make this tree. 
And now I'm going to take you around the barrel room. If you have any questions, we might save it until after I'm done with this um, tour because he's going to be able to answer questions on the cork decorations better than I will. So you'll see next to the tree are barrels that are covered with corks. Those barrels were done in 1998 and 2006. And the packages that are on the floor next to them were added in 2008. And I also should mention that the centerpiece tree was done between 1995 and 1997. In 1999, we added Santa's chair. And this is where when Santa visits, and Santa has been visiting for 17 consecutive years now, he will sit here on the second Sunday of December in, this, in, this, um, in his throne. And the cool thing, which unfortunately we didn't pop this out, but you see that little SC on the bottom? That's also on the back of this chair. And all of the dark colored corks were red wine corks that dad used to do the SC. So that same little display is huge on the back of Santa's chair. And this does hold that, um, that big man. So next I'm taking you over to the fireplace and the clock. The fireplace was done in 2000 and we do have little heated logs in there. And then the Santa's clock was done in 2001. And if you'll notice, the dial right there is just about to hit Christmas Eve. So that dial, and all those are naturally stained corks as well, and all gray ghost corks in here. Now this year, our new design that Dad added, or you can call him Al, is the little red truck with the green Christmas tree. And this has, as he said, 9,385 corks. And I would also like to add that we do still have some of the little Christmas glasses available for sale, and that's what we've been drinking out of all night on this program. Behind the truck is our magical forest. This one was done in 2019. And I cannot even tell you how long it took that poor man to not only construct this, but then drill the holes and string those lights in the back. So now we're gonna head over to the snowman. The snowman was added in 2002. And then probably many of you are aware, my brother, also an Al, is a fireman. So I like to think that the 2016 decoration was just a little bit in honor of him. And that is the fire truck. And I'm telling you y'all, look at this attention to detail. He's got the ladder, ladders on the side. You see the little bucket in the back. I mean, this is some good stuff right here and a bell that rings. Now we're going to go up to the sky and look at the biplane. And that was one of the ones that he was commenting on earlier as being probably one of the most difficult. And here's one of the things that I'm just going to tell you I think is pretty cool about his designs. This man could have stopped with the biplane. But no, he also did a Merry Christmas banner. Same thing with the little red truck. He could have made a little red truck, but no. My overachieving dad puts a green Christmas tree in the back. So notice how we have the propeller that's spinning. And I wanna say there's a lot of, there are some moving parts that no longer move because people like to touch. So we do kinda prefer it when people don't touch. So in 2011, we added Santa's workshop. And again, I draw your attention to his little attention to detail. There's an entrance for the elf. This is where all the elves get the toys ready for all the good little boys and girls. Next, we're gonna go over to Santa's castle. And Santa's castle was added in 2018. 
And yes, you can see they do enjoy their champagne with the corks that are up there. And I will also say they're so appreciative of all of you who contribute your corks back to the projects. In 2004, he added the rocking horse. And this is one where the tail did move at one time. And that's okay, I guess it means the kids really had a good time with it because it doesn't now. And once again, on the saddle, those are all naturally stained corks that he used. In 2014, the gingerbread man. Once again, all naturally stained corks. And this display goes up every year around the Thanksgiving time frame, so you can come and see it live. And then this year we're going to run it through January 3rd. Next, we're going down to the steam engine. His handwriting's a little tricky. I'm thinking this is 2010, right here. Isn't this fun, you guys? Look at this. Once again, the SE, or Santa Express. Down there, you can see the detail on the wheels. Pretty fun, huh? He did a really good job. And then 2007 was the North Pole Post Office. And I will say, we have seen kids pop back here and put their letter in Santa's box. So you can see there's a little letter drop there. Once again, notice all those beautiful naturally stained corks. And for the record, these are all used corks, guys. Used corks on these. In 2003, Al did the Advent candles. In 2005, we have the sleigh and reindeer. So these, you know, sometimes you get stories from one of us that you're not going to get when you talk to, say, mom and dad in particular. So I'm going to give you a little insider story on this one because this is pretty funny. So this all, as he said, detaches for storing, and he takes the different pieces and folds them up. So when he was, at, he constructed this first, and then he put the corks on, as he does with all the decorations. Well, this particular year, mom and dad were watching a lot of TV in their bedroom, and one day mom exclaimed, I am so sick of a hot glue gun in my bed. And that's what was happening at night when he was working on the project. It was something that was convenient to take into the, his room with him. Next, 2002, was the candy cane and lollipops. And you'll also notice, if you've been correct, collecting Christmas glasses, that our Christmas glasses coincide with what the decorations were. And then here is one of my all-time favorites, and this is the Nutcracker. And as you can see, we can't get this one in the building, so the head comes off so that we can actually transport the Nutcracker. There's just something pretty incredible about seeing this one in person. Oh, I love, I see that, Alina. You're right. You guys all do drink a lot of wine because y'all are bringing us these corks and we appreciate it. And then the hot air balloon we have up here. That's another one that, whew, I think he said it was a, one of the most um, difficult engineering feats he did. And this is a tricky one to get hung as well but Al and Jason are big helps with that. So that's the hot air balloon was in 2015. The giant nutcracker was in 2013. And then the original that Al made in 1986 still hangs in the tank room and that's this Christmas tree right here. So that's the original. So now you've gotten yourself a great little tour of the cork decorations and now we're going to go back and see Al and Cheryl. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, for heaven's sakes. I, I'll tell you what, they are slippery. I cannot even find these guys. This, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. You know what? That's it. We're on the move, guys. We can do a little drink first. Mm-hmm. Let's see what happened to Alan Cheryl. 
okay? I'm guessing they probably went back to where they started, don't you think? I'm thinking they're gonna be over at that pretty little tree where they were. So we're gonna head back over there. Thanks for sticking with me. Sorry about this, guys. They act like they own the place. Should I tell them the truth? Okay, all right, I'm gonna flip the camera around and, oh, for heaven's sakes. Okay, all right, all right, this is ridiculous. Okay, um, all right, I just think there's one place left to go. We're gonna try upstairs, what do y'all think? I'll tell you. Thanks for sticking with us. You guys have been real troopers. I haven't gotten to see a lot of the questions because, you know, I was giving y'all the tour of all the quirks. Now we gotta see what happened. Alan Cheryl. Whew, it's a long walk upstairs. Okay. Let's see here. You guys are so patient. Imagine having to be with them every day. So you're just patient today. But some of us are patient all the time. So let's see what we have here. Oh, success. So we're back on again. You were able to find us. We are back on again. Shall we for a moment see if we have any questions that filtered in? Okay, I'm checking real quick. Oh my goodness. All right, let's scroll back. We did Christmas dinner. Um, ham. Lots of people wanting the new glass. Okay. Save us glasses. All right, you guys. Looking good. I just don't want to neglect you guys. Thank you for being patient while I'm reading through real quick. Uh, I agree, Stacy. Santa's elf should not have to endure Alan Cheryl's abandonment. <laughs> I hope there's therapy for that. Okay. Oh, Chris and Sally would love you to put the hat back on. <laughs> All right, it's go time. We're ready for you. <laughs> okay. Well, once again, welcome to the second half of this three-part program. Uh, again, we're, this is a very special holiday program, and what we're at right now is producing a live from the Grego Studio ML1. Again, uh, we want to take this special opportunity to tell you how much we've enjoyed being with you and what's in the future, but we also want to let you know that at the end of the program, we're going to be reviewing the last contest and announcing the winters. winners from the tens of thousands, tens of tens of thousands of entries. First, again, we're producing this from the Grey Ghost Lounge. I hope you would note that we are having the special guests, special audiences from previous programs. Again, they are all wearing masks. It's very important to note that we always try to adhere to the governor's executive orders of 63 and 67. I think the governor may be actually watching this tonight, so I do want him to know that we're doing everything in our power to follow his regulations. Now there's a little known fact about Christmas that I wanted to pass on to you tonight because it's something that uh, has really resulted in an in interesting tradition. It was some time ago where Santa was really having a bad, bad day. Mrs. Claus was really ticked off at him so there was no Christmas cookies being made. The elves felt like they were overworked, so as a result, they were on strike. As luck would have it, the reindeer got into the hooch, and there was no way in the world they were gonna travel that night. And on top of that, the angel hadn't shown up with the Christmas tree. Just about the time Santa was ready to go, the door popped open, in came the angel, and it yelled, hey fatso, where do you want me to stick the tree? And thus began the tradition of the angel on top of the tree. Now, yes. Um, Paula would like to know, where does Al find the time to create and make these court displays? It, ke it keeps me off the po police report. That's very critical, okay. 
but thank you for asking. Actually, Cheryl, it also keeps me out of Cheryl's hair in the evening, so that's the other good thing. I told you guys about the bedroom stuff. <laughs> now this evening, we're going to be, the last wine on the agenda is the 2018 Ranger Reserve, another award-winning wine selling at the winery for $32 a bottle. The, so what we're gonna do is pour them first. And as you notice, there's four glasses showing. Very shortly, you're gonna see a fifth. Well, before we discuss the wine, I think it's important that we once again give a toast to the many friends and relatives who have been with us this year and for years past. Wow, now that's a great wine. Okay, let's talk about the Ranger Reserve. This is a vintage that's, that's new that we did not present to you during the previous SIP trips. So this is a brand new wine. We're really excited to have you taste. It's a blend of five, all five of our Bordeaux grapes. For those of you that are new to us, each of these Bordeaux grapes were small lot fermented, aged 18 months in new French oak, and then blended back to taste. The blend in this particular one is 35% Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% Petit Verdot, 15% each Cabernet Franc and Merlot, and 10% Malbec. Again, it's the equivalent of making five wines to create a single wine. Now, do I have a question coming at me? Well, uh, yes. Dear Christina Price exclaims, all right, we're moving on with you. <laughs> I can't feel my lips. Is that, <laughs> is that normal? And then she exclaimed Amazon and quickly reverted to amazing. <laughs> for what it's Go, worth, girl. for what it's worth, this happens to Cheryl and me on a continuous basis. So I think we're okay. The uh, final words that are coming from Cheryl are going to focus on the future. She wanted again to spend a little bit of time with you to talk about some of the great things that we expect in 2021 from our elected leaders in government. So Cheryl, the podium is yours. Feel free to spend as much time as you'd like on this, this issue. Once again, I think she, is, she has made a tremendous statement here and is a very encouraging narrative on what we have to look forward to. Cheryl has been a very instrumental part of these programs by giving her insight uh, show after show with one notable exception when she actually talked. But outside of that, I cannot begin to thank her for all of the effort of research that she has put into uh, these programs. Thank you again, Cheryl for your input, and here's to you. Now, what's in store for Grey Ghost in 2021? First, we're hoping and praying it's more of a normal year, although the definition of normal is still up in the air. But we're really hoping and praying that it's a, it's a year where we can actually begin to see faces. We are planning a number of events in 2021. Uh, Amy will be keeping you posted, but I have to warn you ahead of time, there are probably going to be some modifications to them for safety's sake. So again, we'll do our best to have some form of uh, normal, normalcy uh, as much as possible. We uh, also plan uh, to introduce our new vintages as usual. 
uh, our work in the vineyard is going to be focused again on quality. Uh, this year, we're really hoping that all of you are going to be able to come out, that we're going to actually be able to see your smiles and uh, do the laughing that we've had in the past. So when you come through the door, that's what we're really after. Amy, a question? Yes, Chris and Sally would like to know, can we look forward to 2021, 2021 Happy Half Hour Productions? The three of us are, have talked about this. We are looking forward to doing some. I don't think it'll be on as a regular basis, but it will be, I hope, frequently enough that we can keep you posted on what's going on. As long as the jokes can keep coming, we'll keep producing them. Uh, the other thing we want you to know is we've loved the fact that you've come in. Uh, the, the, what we're looking for is to see smiles on the whole face. So many of you have beautiful smiling eyes and that's something that we've really appreciated. Finally, our major effort is to create great wines that we've had in the past that we've built our reputation on. One of the things I emphasized at the beginning of this program was the passion that Cheryl and I have in creating wines. And I hope that this won't diminish uh, in 2021. We held true to it in 2020. Now, the last segment of this, the last segment of this whole program is going to focus on the competition that took place earlier in the previous set of SIP trips. If you remember, there was a, a, a six questions, each question related to one of the six uh, programs. Amy, another question? Uh, yes, I did the zoom in for the benefit of uh, Diane Andrews, who was having trouble reading the message. But uh, Bill Engel, God bless him, Al, love the bow tie, but how do you keep your boots looking so fresh? <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, this is my formal wear, so I hope you appreciate this is as close as you're going to get to seeing me really, really, really dressed up. But thank you for noticing. I appreciate that. Okay, with this, what I'm going to do is have Amy read off the six questions, then I'm going to give you the answers, and then we're going to announce the winner. So at the end of season two, we had a quiz on the six sip trips and a question from each episode to see if you were paying attention. Question one, sip trip one, which of these pests are not a problem in the vineyard? A, deer, B, birds, C, raccoons, D, turtles, or E, bear? So many of you did really well on this question. The answer was turtles. Very good. In SIP trip number two, which of the following is not used at Grey Ghost during bottling? A, a semi-automatic bottle filler. B, vacuum corker. C, screw-on bottle caps. D, color-coded capsule. E, automatic labeling machine. Again, you all did very well on this one. It's C, the screw on caps, and I'm very proud of you. Now, sip trip number three. What, which is not a part of your training to taste wine during the wine appreciation session of sip trip three? A, stemmed glassware. B, sight and smell. C, sip slurp Splash, D, spit or swallow, E, I learned that all are used to appreciate my great Grey Ghost wine. Once again, the vast majority of you, tens of thousands of responders, picked the, the right one. It was E, all of the above. In sip trip number four, some of the parts of a Grey Ghost tank include everything listed except a, manways, B, sight lines, C, wooden valves, D, German stainless steel airlocks, E, cooling jackets. Again, you all did very well. 
wooden valves were the, was the answer that was not used. Everything else was stainless steel. In SIP trip number five, there are two types of barrels used at Grey Ghost to ferment and or age wine. One of these is A, polyurethane drums, B, copper barrels, C, French oak barrels, D, concrete barrels, E, fiberglass barrels. This one, we had a couple of people get it wrong, but for the answer was C, French oak barrels. I agree, Lisa. It is alcohol abuse to, to spit when you love the wine. <laughs> Sip trip six. Which of the following does not happen at Grey Ghost during harvest? A. Grapes are hand-picked by volunteers. B. Both red and white grapes are crushed during processing. C. Whites can be fermented in stainless steel or in oak barrels. D. Reds are fermented on skins to extract color. Or E. All the above happens at Grey Ghost during harvest. This was the downfall of so many of you thousands and thousands of responders. Many of you put the answer as E, but the answer was D, crushing red and white grapes. We do not crush our fruit. We destem, and the destemming avoids breaking seeds. So for that reason, those of you who missed that question, it was because you looked at the crushing as something that the vast majority of wineries do, but not at Grey Ghost. Now we come to the winners. So Al, I think before we find out the winners, we should know what the prize is. Very, very good. The winners of this contest, and we're going to select, we're gonna pick out and actually give all the winners this particular uh, award will be a bottle of the 2015 vintage Reserve Cabernet. Produced and bottled by Grey Ghost Vineyards. After how many years in the barrel? Three. So this is a very special award. I'm going to actually put it out here so that you'll see that we're not going to open it and consume it while we're on the air. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> With that, Amy, are we ready for the announcement? Yes. So of the hundreds of thousands of people that entered, how many correct respondents did we have? We had two individuals that responded correctly. And are they both winners tonight? Yes, they are, Amy. Yes, they are. And who is our winner number one? Uh, do you want to say, do you want to give the number of the people's names, Daryl? Jeez. <laughs> I, think, I think Cheryl is to the point where she's going to pass it over to me while she has a sip of this very special wine, the Ranger Reserve, which is available at the winery low, low for the low, low price of $32 a bottle. What we are going to do is give you their names and their last initial, and then you will be notified directly by Amy so that you know who they are. The first one was Andy N, as in new. Yay! The second one was PJ B, as in boy. Congratulations to both of you of the hundreds of thousands of entries. It was so exciting to have the two of you win. And with that, we toast you. I'm running out of wine in one glass here. We're going to toast you both uh, for your, your uh, winnings. Now, in closing, we want to lift our glasses one more time to everyone who has supported us in 2020. 
this has truly been a very challenging year. I know I'm not speaking just about Grey Ghost, but I'm talking about all of us. And I think the fact that we survived it and we're moving into 2021 is really exciting. So I truly do hope you have a God bless and truly have a safe and wonderful Christmas and a very happy new year. You have been a very special addition to the Grey Ghost family. We look at every one of you as being a part of our family. And with that, I guess we're all done. So Amy, we'll catch you later. Whoa, 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 where are you guys going? Oh, oh, for heaven's sakes, why? I just don't understand why I can't find them. Okay, so I guess you might be stuck with me for a minute. To the question out there, are we going to do some fun in the new year? We are. We're going to do another library tasting in January, the same. You know, we'll have one-hour appointments. We'll keep you all space. We're all going to have a really good time. We're going to do flights of the Reserve Cabernets in January. Come and see us. We're never, like, crazy busy, so it's wonderful. You can have a relaxing Saturday or Sunday here. We are planning to hold the Chocolates and Cabernet. We'll keep you posted on how we might have to revamp it to keep everybody safe. And we also are looking forward to doing the barrel tasting. And we'll modify that as well because we want to see you so desperately. And we thank you so much for joining us tonight. So, you know, I think I got to go see if I can figure out what happened to them. I, I just, I, I can't, you know, what is going on? But just remember, guys, we love you desperately. And we wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.